Today I visit with uh, Marlene Snyder and Beverly Meyer of High Point, Missouri. I'm your host, Rick J, and this is About Town, the series. to About Town, the series, coming to you from the Snyder family home, High Point, Missouri. Uh, I would ask you to please join me in welcoming Mrs. Marlene Snyder of High Point, Missouri. Welcome. Uh, nice to have you with us today, Marlene. Thank you, Rick. It's nice to be here. Yes. Well, start things off, if I may call you Marlene, by your first name. Absolutely. Okay, we come together today to feature a look into the High Point, Missouri area, past and present. Uh, we'll be joined later in the second segment with Mrs. Beverly Meyer, a lifetime resident of High Point, Missouri. Marlene, please introduce yourself to the uh, viewers and tell us a little bit about the community of High Point, uh, Missouri. Well, my name is Marlene Snyder. I and not a native of this area. I am originally from Nebraska, but I married a native, Fred Snyder. So my home has been my point since 1962, following my marriage. Um, it's a place I've learned to love, um, and Fred, his family has lived here forever, you know, since 1862. Um, goes back a long, long way. Um, 
High Point is a lively little community um, located between Eldon and California, Missouri, and between Jefferson City and Versailles, Missouri. So we're kind of in the heart of everything. I see. Now you spoke of Fred. Is that uh, the uh, other part of your lives? He is. Fred, Fred Snyder, Snyder, yes. He passed away in August of 2018. I see. So um, this is his family home built by his uh, grandfather in 1906. Um, and after the, his pass, his mother's passing, and after Fred's passing, it felt kind of in a state of disrepair. But I had it in my heart to renovate this home, and it's been a two-year process, but we're finally there. It's beautiful, and we'll give you a, somewhat of a tour of the home uh, later on in the show. Well, you know, I'd like to really go back a ways and and. Uh, Talk about where, when, and why this community of High Point, uh, Missouri, was established. I guess it goes kind of back to the Osage Indian settlement, which had a trading post here, uh, uh, bringing in uh, different settlers. So tell us about that history, if you would. The earliest information that I have seen as far as the history of High Point indicated that the first white settlers came here in about the 1830s. And that is kind of verified by some of the abstracts that I've seen. Um, and there was an Osage Indian trading post here, and as the white people came in, they gradually moved further south. Um, we kind of have call 1845 as our founding date for High Point, and we would have celebrated our 175th anniversary in 2020. Um, but because of COVID, we weren't able to have any celebrations. But the first store, the first school, the first post office were started in 1845. So being an unincorporated uh, community, um, we just got to go by the history books. I see. <laughs> well, you spoke of an abstract in 1830, mm -hmm. you're right. And then I understand that in 1835, the High Point Baptist Church was established. Well, and there was um, there's a High Point Baptist Cemetery just about a mile north of here. Um, the, the James family donated the land for that, and the the first church was actually built on their property, and then later built down where the current church is, and it's grown through the years. Very active, lively congregation. Yes. Um, now the, the it's the second oldest town in. Uh, on record, I guess, in Montauk County, correct? Well, as far as I, I know, I'm sure there's other, because of being on the river, I think the community of Lupus was established more around 1817, and I know the community of Jamestown celebrated their 175th anniversary, you know, four or five years ago. So oh, um, there probably are some older than us, but... Uh, our claim to fame is that we are the highest point in Monarchy County, and there's proof of that. There's a geological survey plaque on the front of the former Tising Snor, which is floated painted down yes. in High Point. And we're going to share these uh, events, you might say, <laughs> with uh, some photos as we uh, talk about them. Well, that uh, it's uh, 904 feet, so now we know where High Point. High Point is. Uh, it's, it's, it's about a fourth of a mile north of here. Is we're actually the highest. Oh, point, I see. So uh -huh. We're very close. Well, 1843 rings a bell with H. W. Kelly uh, built the first mercantile. I understand in High Point. Mm -hmm. Later, be opened by his son uh, John F. Kelly, uh, which included the first post office uh, in High Point. And those, those were all about the 1843-45 era, so yes. that's that's where we go with our um, counting our when our founding date. Oh, I see. Uh huh. That's 1845 was a big year for it. Was. <laughs> it really uh, was. Looking at the history and sharing it with you, our discussions with uh, you and also uh, Beverly. Um, well, there's a neighboring town called Latham. And there's a gentleman that come in uh, to the history books named Judge F.A. Latham po uh, was appointed the first postmaster, I guess, 1852, and uh, held that position to 857. 
I understand. I, I, yeah, the name Latham that I have seen has mostly been a Dr. Latham who started here. Uh, at one time, there were several doctors here. I see. Uh, Dr. Dunlap was uh, prominent in uh, developing some of the businesses. He actually had uh, his uh, office was in part of the buildings downtown. I see. Um, he also, and you may ask this later, but um, platted the community uh, and laid out the streets in High Point, the, the one that is Highway C now that runs through High Point, was called State Street. And he actually platted one that was more to the south, and it was called Second Street, which was never developed. Right. But um, there is property that kind of has um, housing lots laid out right. uh, that he, he had Put together years ago and yeah. consider ourselves a community I guess I you know there's never been uh, a mayor or a city council or anything like that the closest we have to that right now is or a chamber of commerce um, is our high point community renewal association which was established in 1993 so. I see well how did high point grow based on the historical events so, I know 1857 to 1880, there was a lot of businesses, uh, basically, even a, a Simpson coal mine. Yes, coal, that was west of High Point. Um, the Simpson coal mine um, was very active from the 1850s until I think that I read that it finally closed completely in 1945. I see. Um, there was also a lead mine um, just located just south of High Point, about a mile, um, that took lots of um, ore out of it. Uh, it also closed in the 1840s, um, but was turned into a, like a fishing lake and became kind of a gathering place for locals. Um, in fact, there's a picture of some of the tizing ladies with their hats and long dresses and they were taken their picture was taken at the at the they called it the diggings uh -huh. so if anybody who's come from high point if you talk about the diggings that's what they're referring oh, to is what happened to the the lead mine after it finally closed right now there's a story with the lead mine i heard years ago from my brother-in-law that uh, at some point there was a, a machine that uh, got out of tilt and ended up in one of the mines <laughs> and maybe still there today? Well, I don't know about if it was the lead mine or if it was the uh, coal mine. I did read in last night about the coal mine that uh, someone got too close to the edge with his bulldozer and it, oh. it fell over, but the man, it actually landed on two rock outcroppings and so the man wasn't even hurt. Oh, excellent. Um, oh. But I don't know if that's the the story or not. I, but, I am not real familiar with all of the, the stories that have taken place. To this date, that machine is probably <laughs> it, still it could well be. It could well be. <laughs> well, the story also goes that uh, the uh, coal mine uh, was rearing the purest coal of yes. many uh, comparable mines throughout the United States. I think that's true. I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. and, and the lead, I think, was the same thing. It was very valuable. I see. Well, I understand that um, the Simpson coal mine was established, but then D.C. Sterling Farms and Mines. Okay, that's where the lead mine is. That's where the lead mine was at. Mm -hmm. And then a, a flax, or what they call a tow mill, was opened in 1874. Um, so what was the, the uh, interest in um, flax? What the... T.J. Hart, who was one of the owners of the store following uh, J.F. Kelly um, was a real mover and shaker in this community and he um, kind of cornered the flax market and at one time there were like 5,000 acres of flax being grown in Montauk County and he was growing about 2,600 acres in the oh, I see. and so you know what what you all, what you do with flax, I'm not 100% sure, but it was that was one of the products of 
T.J. Hart. Oh, that was my next question. I'm trying to think of flax. Now, I'm familiar with flax, not personally, but uh, uh, flax is uh, used a lot of times uh, for the health benefit mm -hmm. and uh, as a diuretic or in, uh, uh, helps strengthen the bones, especially the uh, female gender. <laughs> well, in the same year, 1874, and this is significant now, uh, in the same year, 1974, J.F. Tizing was one of the original owners of the general store. And in 1880, he became owner, actual owner of the general store and added the drugstore within. And we're going to meet a direct descendant, blood descendant of J.F. Tizing in the uh, second segment. So stay with us. Well, uh, you know, in 1861, my research, uh, the 1st Regiment, Missouri, the United States Reserve Corps was organized in June of that year. Mm -hmm. uh, the command was under Captain Andrew J. Hart. Mr. Hart uh, coming up again as a volunteer, possibly, when this regiment that was established under the regiment, which was Company K, Cold County Home Guards. Mm -hmm. That was organized and must of July 31st, 1861. Uh, both, I guess, were formed as a support. Uh, a civil war effect, north or south? Would you would you think? Well, I I would say they were probably union. Uh, union. Yes, uh, I don't know that for sure, but I I would say that. And he later on, um, in some of the reading I had done, um, after the the civil war was over, maintained his position with the Missouri Guard, uh -huh. and. Uh, I don't know, somehow it, there, it was a controversy over the railroad that was running from Eldon through Russellville. Um, but his, the guard at that time had something to do with the railroad where it was locating. Right. And because of the confrontation over that, um, I think maybe Harrison Township had been split and, and Burris Fort Township was oh, formed. See which is where Enon is located, is it in Burris Fort Townships. So. Oh, I see, okay. Well, as an extension to that military, uh, should we say, mindset, uh, in 2013, there was a major event happening in um, uh, High Point. So can you share that with us? That would be that Veterans Memorial. Okay, uh, yes. Established. Um, the Renewal Association decided that um, we would like to honor the veterans who have had any connection to this community. So um, we just sent out messages to people that, you know, if you want to, your family member, their name on this memorial, let us know, um, and their uh, branch of service. and uh, you know, We had no idea how many names we would have. But we completely filled up one side with army and had to go borrow part of the, the another side from the marines since there weren't as many marines. But I we see. have Civil War veterans' names on it. How many uh, would you say? Today, I I don't even couldn't even venture a guess. But there's well over a thousand. I'm sure. Oh my, that's great. And the, the one of the most incredible things about that was that um, donations provided for. Uh, the, the building, uh, work time, uh, concrete, sand, dirt, whatever, yeah. it was all contributed. Yeah. We ended up not owing a penny on that at the end. Well, so. it's a beautiful monument. It's right in front of the school mm -hmm. uh, on Highway C or what we would call High Point Main Street. <laughs> so you'll be able to uh, check that out as you drive by slowly and, and take a peek at the monument, pull in and, and, and uh, show and, your respect. If you and would. read the names. I you know, read right, names. you know, for a long time after we first uh, dedicated it, you could look down there and there were always cars around with people yes. with, looking for names on that. Right. So. And I, I would say if anyone is watching this and would like to have a veteran's name added to that, yes. um, just please let us know. Please, okay. Well, Marlene, we must take a break, so please hang with me if you would a few more minutes. After the break, uh, we will be joined by Mrs. Beverly Meyer, born, raised, 
and still a pillar of the community High Point, Missouri. Uh, may I ask you please to introduce Mrs. Beverly Meyer. Yes, this is my friend Beverly Meyer. Um, her grandfather and her father, her great-grandfather, um, all were participants in the store, uh, on the tithing store in High Point. And she also spent a lot of her years working in the store. So okay. this is Beverly Meyer. Well, nice Beverly to... Beverly Tizing Meyer. Okay. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you, Beverly. <laughs> uh, and it's great to have you on the show as uh, one of the originals, shall we say, from the High Point, Missouri. So I'm going to start asking you questions. If I may call you by your first name, I always try to get that permission. Okay, super. You know, teachers, you have to really honor their uh, their presence, you might say. <laughs> um, well, tell us a little bit about Beverly Meyer, uh, if you would. My great-great-grandfather and his family came over from Hanover, Germany, to Ohio. My great-grandfather, then after he got 13 years old, he came to Missouri. And they landed between High Point and California, Missouri. And then uh, J.F., who was my great-grandfather, and who also was uh, uh, Marlene's husband, Fred's uh, grandfather, and then his uh, I mean, great-grandfather had a daughter who married a Snyder, and uh, my great-grandfather had a son, and that was my grandfather. And then they had this, they started the store, and uh, it just went down through the ages and finally ended up with me, and I'm the fourth generation. I was born in High Point, in my dad's house that he was born in. I guess I'll tell you this year, oh, uh, 1939. 1939. 1939. So, now your, your dad's and, uh, name, so I, your grandfather's name and your dad's name. What were those names so we can connect? Because we talked a lot about history in the yeah, first Yeah, Tizing. Tizing was the family J. name. J.F. Tizing. Uh, J.F. Tizing was my great-grandfather. And, uh, and then he had Ten children, wow. two of them passed away when they were uh, young babies, and then they had my grandfather, and then my grandfather had my dad, and my dad had me. My dad and I were both born in, in a house, in the house that I, I live on that ground, but I don't live in the same house, the, same, oh, the house is... That your your ben, grandfather has been the, the demolished, and I my guess. grandfather lived there. Right, and then he moved down to the downtown, downtown, but, which is about yeah. three, two or three and, uh, blocks. Well, we have some small. great shots of you, uh, pictures of you as a young lady, a young girl, in uh, different uh, points of your life, and we're going to share those with everyone as we we speak. But now you might let's think all the way back to the beginning. Your association of High Point, Missouri in those special times, what is one of the first fondest memories that you can identify well, and share I would with? Say, uh, Look in the camera I, and tell those people. I started school right across the street from where I live now, and it was a one-room country school. And in 1952, they built the school that is now present, uh, the present school now, and it is a, uh, K through eight. I see. And when you graduate from eighth grade, you may go to Eldon High School, Russellville High School, or California High School. Okay. Of no. course, my great, my aunts, my dad's three sisters were all uh, teachers, and I went, my, uh, I have a sister, and she and I both went to California to high school. We were in uh, the main thing, though, uh, in my class, we were the first class to graduate from, from this, this new school. Going back, uh, I want to take you back again, if I may, uh, to when you was a child. What's your first 
great memory of High Point that you can remember? Well, probably family is is the, was the main concern there, and we was always at Grandma's house. And, uh, did you eating have a special Christmas dinners? Christmas and Fourth of July. Did you make? No, ice, we didn't ice do cream, too much Fourth uh, of July. It's mostly Christmas and and birthdays, and of course my uh, grandfather had a farm, or J. F. had a farm, and they had the store, and so they were. They, was, they were busy they all were the time. Busy. So uh, you were a busy family. Whenever I was in the seventh grade, I started working in the store, and I worked until I sold it in 2016. I see. Well, now let's go ahead. Now we'll jump after graduation. Your schooling after graduation from high school, you uh, attended some uh, some uh, interesting schools uh, to further your education and to become a teacher. Now, where did you attend college? We went to college at Warrensburg, uh, University of Central Missouri now. Yes. And uh, both my sister and I graduated uh, with music as our degree. So you became then employed as a teacher. At Green Ridge, Missouri, where it's close to Sedalia. And then I married my grade school sweetheart and, his and name? came back to High Point. And then what was his name? <clears throat> Excuse John. John and, uh, Myers. John Meyer, and he. Uh, uh, we lived on a farm close to Eldon, and then he passed away in two thousand nine. And see. I had bought my mom and dad's house because I was still working with the store, and I taught at Russellville. Uh, go in there and finished uh, 40 years of teaching music and I've gotten uh, right. and a proclamation have... and a resolution from the Governor Carnahan. Well, Beverly, um, your teaching career, I understand you're still teaching and, um, and I know you enjoy that we, uh, in our conversations, but I want to point out that you received an award also, and that was, uh, I guess, the pioneer of education. Can you tell us what that award meant to you? Um, describe the award. I know only certain ones received that award. Well, both my sister and I had already retired, and, but we went back and, and started subbing for the uh, kids at school, and then they we got another job, a part-time job teaching, and in 2006, I got a letter in the mail saying that I was going to receive this prestigious award yes. that included six people every year in the state of Missouri, and both my sister and I and what's were nominated. Her name? What's your sister's name? My sister's name is Sandra, and uh, she. Uh, taught at Mocaine, South Callaway. I see. And, uh, and I was in uh, Russellville. And uh, like I said, only six out of the state of Missouri gets nominated. I do not know who nominated us, but undoubtedly they knew both of us. Yes. Also, in uh, about four years before that, I had my grade school teacher also uh, got pioneer of education. And to be that many in this little town of High Point, yes. that makes us very proud. Yes. State Superintendent's uh, Convention had a dinner, and this was at Tantera down at the lake. We got uh, uh, a DVD. We got a uh, big plaque and a uh, Olympic coin. coin. Great. Well, congratulations to you and your sister and those members of High Point, Missouri. That's quite an honor uh, from this small community. So congratulations. Well, now, looking back at the lifespan, please share some of the memories or stories handed down by the family uh, from High Point that you remember as a child through the years. I understand there was a safe blown up here in town at one point. 
Uh, yes. In 1882, uh, two men broke into our J.F. Tizing store and uh, tried to blow up the safe. And when they blew up the safe, uh, it burned two rooms of the store down. But the one room in the store that has a second story is original. I see. Plus the post office. All that is original. Great. Now we're showing you pictures of that building. And today. then they and built it back. Uh -huh. They started business in three months. Oh, excellent. That, and very, they built uh, it back to just one story. I see. Workers and achievers here in the Tizings. <laughs> so that's the blood we're, we're visiting with today. We see the energies even from Beverly of the the tie scenes, I guess. <laughs> well, here's an event that I want you to cover also. The, there's a chrysanthemum show and a celebration that grew into the first 1976 uh, celebration when High Point was recognized as a bicentennial community. Parade, the flag, a presentation, and then it gets on into the, the 1993 High Point at Missouri Renewable Celebration. Marlene, can you share with us a little bit of this that I just covered and what that, how that came about and what the, what's the feeling now from the High Point community uh, where that started out uh, as a chrysanthemum show? Right, and that ran from uh, 18, what did I say, 1890 until 1941, the chrysanthemum show. Oh, I see. And it was put on by the Ladies Aid Society of the Presbyterian Church and with as well as showing off your chrysanthemums in November you they also had an oyster soup supper and homemade ice cream oh. and in um, 1976 when everybody was celebrating the bicentennial uh, Larry Fletcher who was our superintendent of schools down here at that time um, we got together a committee and uh, decided that we would try to become a bicentennial community. So we filled out all the paperwork and were presented with our bicentennial flag um, and officially recognized as a bicentennial community. And not many communities our size achieved that. Yes. Um, and we did have a parade, um, which we have carried on over to the the High Point Homecoming is what we call our celebration now, which is um, always on the Saturday before Labor Day. Oh, I see. And we proudly say that our parade is longer than our town, um, <laughs> which it's, we've, we really do have good participation in our parade. And we did in 1976 also. Um, that was the day that uh, we had basket dinner on the ground and all kinds of old-fashioned games. It, it was really a heartwarming kind of celebration. So and one of the things we did then is what we have also continued is we always close out our festival with a community worship service on Sunday. Oh, excellent. So um, it's involved a lot of people. Um, their willing hearts and hands make things like this possible in a community our size. So. Now, I only live about four and a half miles from Main Street here in the community of High Point. So I uh, enjoy, uh, have enjoyed attending the, uh, the celebration annually on occasion, walking through. And uh, so really, uh, I have enjoyed attending the, uh, the celebration annually on occasion, walking through. And uh, so really uh, a homey, should we say, feeling uh, of community, even as, as you drive through, you take a breath and you're out of town, but there's a lot of history here, a lot going on, a lot of continuity and uh, unity within the community. So when you drive through, think about the, uh, the people and uh, the unity that is even uh, extended here. Uh, you stop into one of the shops locally and uh, just say hi and, uh, and get the feeling of High Point, Missouri. Well, taking a look, as I just mentioned, Marlene, at the modern-day High Point, Missouri, 
please share with the viewers uh, some of those main attractions that uh, they would find as they drive through or stop in and visit uh, currently in one of the high point uh, current businesses. Uh, I understand there is a historical a landmark uh, on Main Street also. I think you're probably referring to the, the store, um, which the downtown area, uh, which included Tizing Store, the post office, and the building that I own, which houses my Marlene's Country Travel and the Beauty Point, um, were named to the National Historic Register. So we have a plaque yes. located mm -hmm. in the front of the building, um, design, you know, t designating our area as a National Historic yes. So District. people coming through, they can see the plaque, they can see the uh, Veterans Memorial, Right. They're going to see Snyder Dairy Farm right <laughs> next to the school. Uh, you're going to get a whiff of the um, aroma, of, of the natural aroma that's from the cattle fields. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not only going to visit a great community, but you're going to get a little feeling of uh, being out in the uh, community <laughs> surrounded by uh, livestock and uh, farm and, uh, and what have you. Just if you take a, a drive down Double C Highway uh, through the curves and over to Latham, Missouri, you're going to see a, a change in elevation as you go back down from the 904 <laughs> feet. <laughs> so we invite you to visit the area just as a scenic drive, if nothing else. Um, now there are new businesses in town. Would you want to highlight one, uh, a couple of those that that people will visit? I see a couple of those being really uh, getting a lot of uh, ad advertisement on TV stations, what have you. Right. Um, the, there are several new buildings. The newest one is probably Pop Surplus, which is located in downtown High Point. Um, and they've built on to their building twice since they've been there in the last two years. Wow. Um, our quick stop out here was started by a man named Ben Reitz in 1993. It has changed hands several times since then and was closed briefly for a while between owners um, and really made the community realize how much we needed that when you had to drive through Russellville, Eldon, or California to get gas for your lawnmower. Uh -huh. um, so it uh, it has um, continued to grow. Um, we have uh, a furniture store. Rainbow, Rainbow Brothers. Rainbow furniture, Brothers furniture. Uh, is known throughout the United States. People drive from all over the United States to um, purchase, review, or what have you, handmade furniture, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful furniture. And that's from the, uh, the Mennonite community, I understand. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a high point in uh, uh, high point, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, and, and we also have, um, just, they purchased the building that used to house the MoDOT uh, station and are busy all the time repairing vehicles. Um, next door to that is a laser cutting business, which has been there for about the last five years. Um, I see. We have building, you know, tie, uh, Hoback Fence is another business Hoback that was Fence, started yes. in 93. Um, the Papen P&W Garage has been a fixture in High Point yes. for a long time. It mostly now, I think, they tend to sell livestock trailers. For a, a small community where you take a breath going through town, there is so much happening and major elements of the uh, industrial, mm -hmm. you might say, small town industry. Right. Uh -huh. And one other business that I would kind of would like to point out that originated in High Point, and I you see these Opie's transport trucks yes. all over the United States. And they actually originated in High Point, about a mile south of High Point. Ah. Um, Mr. Lloyd Opie started as a milk hauler, hauling, picking up milk around the community. And that went on to turn into Opie's milk haulers for several years. And now it's Opie's transport since they've gone national. Now you speak of High Point industry, but there is a community group that 
basically looks after High Point, uh, keeps it afloat somewhat. And would you like to recognize that by name and those people that serve with I understand you're the president. Yes, of the High Point Community Renewal Association. Uh, was founded in 1993 um, with our goal to be bring people to our community to kind of get some recognition. Beverly is the, the secretary for our organization. Uh -huh. um, we have a 12 member board that meets once a month, um, have an annual meeting where it, we are a 501c3 organization so any donations right. made to the Renewal Association are tax deductible. Right. Um, we put on a 4th of July celebration every year just get people together in the community. Uh, we've, yes. we've tried entertainment at that, but most of the people are just read, want to just sit and visit yes. and have a great fireworks show. We do a tribute to our veterans since um, okay. we have the memorial. All right, and now if people want to gather more information, uh, how do they contact you? You have the travel agency mm -hmm. next to the post office. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a uh, an email address where people, or a phone number you'd like to share that people can uh, call you for more information, uh, the happenings. Uh, okay. In, uh, well, my email address is marlenes, M-A-R-L-E-N-E-S, at iland, I-L-A-N-D, dot net. My phone number at my office is 660-489-2200. And if I'm not there to pick up the phone, the answering machine does, and I always return Super. calls. So. Excellent. Well, thank you. Well, Marlene and uh, Beverly, that's uh, about to run out of time. So please give your closing words, if you would, uh, Beverly. Uh, pass on to the viewers, look into the camera, and, and tell uh, your closing words. To keep in touch with the news, you're, you're a column writer for two different newspapers. Would you like to uh, close with them? How people can stay tuned, you see, we say, to what's happening through your writings. Well, uh, <clears throat> after the main one passed away, I didn't want it to end. And so I write for the California Democrat and the Ellen Advertiser. And since the pandemic has been coming along, we don't have very many people visiting as much as we used to. So uh, a former... Uh, he was from California, Missouri, and he's been superintendent of High Point, and he wrote a book about uh, Montauk County uh, education from the beginning to now, and so I've been writing some, uh, history of High Point, and I've been writing history of the Montauk County schools, and uh, I've even had uh, some people tell me they wish I'd keep it up because... Uh, they didn't know a lot of that stuff, yes. and it's now, down on paper. So you're, you're using a, a foundation of uh, actual information, should we say, based on Mr. Larry Fletcher's. Yes, he wrote a book. Wrote the book yes. about Montauk County Schools beginning. Okay, and, and Marlene, how would you like to close uh, with the viewers? Uh, if you look in the camera, and what you'd like to leave fresh in the minds of our viewers here on About Town, the series. Well, we are quite proud of our community. Um, and one of the things I'd, I'd like to share about the Renewal Association, we started giving uh, scholarships to our students who have attended High Point and graduated from high school or are attending college. In total, we've probably given over $30,000 in scholarship awards to High point oh, students, um, but I I think what makes High Point great is that the people care about this community and are willing to um, kind of put their hand to the shovel, so to speak, Excellent. and do what it takes to make things happen and make it happen well. Um, and this shows very well. Yeah. Well, so. and it uh, also uh, keeps you near. You can go to California, Ellen, Versailles, Tipton, Jefferson City. Ellen. We're kind of the hub of the yes. center. Right. right. The and junction of Sea Highway 
and 87. <laughs> yes. Well, Mrs. Snyder, Mrs. Meyer, uh, I want to thank you once again for contributing to About Town, the series. A look at High Point, Missouri has been really inspiring uh, to visit with you both offering uh, informational experience and, and an educational experience. So I want to thank you both for uh, being a part of About Town, uh, the series. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.